are you asking clients the right questions? My name is Eileen Burns. I'm a soul empowerment coach. I'm owner of Stress Coach Training and a spiritual marketing club. Now, as someone who has studied for healing for over 30 years and studied different holistic coaching, counselling, all sorts of different types of therapeutic modalities. And, you know, as someone who's a, you know, was a practising therapist and healer and a coach, but also more importantly, as a client, a client for many people for about nearly 35 years, one of the things that I saw was a huge problem and the healing holistic and therapy wellness and, and, and wellness industry was people not asking the right questions or not enough questions or making assumptions about their clients before they even knew the whole picture. Sadly, I think that has actually got in some ways worse. And I'll tell you why. We, you know, we live in a society now that everything is almost rushed. Um, and sometimes also, you know, compared to traditional therapies, often, you know, when a client was coming to you, you didn't know who they were. You had no information about them until maybe they filled in the consultation form and they told you, or maybe sometimes, you know, they would email you the details. But the reality is sometimes that when people are in maybe your groups or you get a message for them or somebody maybe you know, you can make what assumptions. And those assumptions can cost your business. Those assumptions can cost you as a therapist and a healer your reputation. You know, but it obviously can be very costly for the client because if you make assumptions, you can, first of all, take them down a whole protocol or go down an angle that is not right for them. And you can, again, cause them a lot of money because, and that was one of the biggest challenges that I had, was that sometimes people, you know, and I have to be honest, I had a complex history. So I used to feel sorry for some of the therapists and, you know, I've got some good friends that are therapists and Irene is somebody who's a body therapist that I went to for years and Irene, you know, I thank God, you know, even just to take that information on is a lot for, for um, therapists. But sometimes they're really, really important things that clients, that people miss and they don't think to ask or if they don't, and this is really important as well, if it's something they don't understand, um, they, or they have very little knowledge about, that they don't actually ask what it is, or they make assumptions. And there's lots of, for example, conditions out there and diseases and, and schools of thought that are just generalisations. That means that when you are presented with a client with a certain type of conditions, or certain problems that you may make assumptions about that situation right away and you may be completely off. And this is a big, big problem. And I saw this in a lot of clients where a lot of clients would come and they were just kind of fed up and in many ways and exhausted and overwhelmed and tired, you know, of going to people that jumped the gun that they were maybe going with misinformation, miseducation, or maybe not up to date with Leto's research, or just going by what the medical system said and didn't use their own common sense. And, and the reality is, I see this all the time. I see every, I can honestly say, if I went on Facebook and social media, I see things that are overgeneralized every single day, which tells me that the, the therapist, the healer, or the coach, has often, um, they're not looking at the bigger picture and, and they're not seeing the client as an individual. They're, they're just overgeneralizing. And, you know, there's lots of teachings out there that do overgeneralize. And, you know, 
obviously I'm just one person, but I have went to a lot of people and I know a lot of healers and therapists and they, the best therapists never overgeneralize. They don't make assumptions. They ask the right questions. And I've done a video about this before. They're great detectives because they have the ability to really listen. They don't jump to conclusions until they know. And but we have this thing that sometimes therapists and healers think that they have to be like this monkey that does tricks, that they have to know it all and they have to be intuitive and, you know, and, and then that can cause problems because you can start projecting, projecting things on your client that is nothing to do with your client. And what you've got to understand is those projections can cause a lot of damage. And if you don't understand something properly, you can make you can make the situation so much more damaging. I just want you to think about this. Most people have, have had this experience at some level where they went to a doctor or a professional who hasn't listened to them and has made a completely wrong diagnosis and the person's known because the doctor's been too busy, not compassionate enough, or jumped the gun, maybe just focused on one thing, but it's not really listening and you know in your gut, you know in your instinct or something that they're not taking it seriously what that problem is. Now, if you have clients that continually have those experiences, it becomes very challenging for the client. That, you know, they can... And while I've been there, you, you can start to build a lack, a lack of trust and you have to start being more discerning of who you work with. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I had to learn was when I started, you know, connecting with people and they made assumptions before they, they knew, was then I had to learn the hard way that, that that was probably not the best therapist for me to work with. But the reality is we all can make assumptions at certain times and that's human nature. I'll tell you, you know, it is a kind of funny story and it's maybe some people might not find it a funny story. I'll give you an example of what happened to me and I was really quite young. Um, and I think this was about, I was about 18 at the time, I might have been 19. But basically, um, I had... My sight had been so seriously deteriorating to a point that actually I thought I couldn't. Well, I had an incident basically where I got a fly in one eye and then realised that because the fly was in one eye, I couldn't see the other eye. So initially it happened while I was at college and one of the lecturers came and made out that I was this crazy female who was off her head. But it turned out to be really quite sinister because indeed I had um, lost most of my sight. It's like I can only see, it's like a, it's like shapes I can see. I can't see, you know, normal the way other people can see. But what happened was at the time, my parents were obviously in a state of panic and I went to an optician and the optician, first of all, thought I had some sort of brain tumour or something just to do with what they were seeing at the back of the eye. So demanded that I get an urgent um, medical appointment. And it's a long story because I actually should have been more up. There's been all, there was a lot of reasons for this. But what happened when I went to the doctors was that this doctor, it was a phone doctor, took me in. And he took out a book because I had already a very, very rare condition. That very few people have had it since a young child. And he started to look up a book. Now, I believe that they, this actual problem was related to something else, but that's a whole other story. But he took out, he was looking up all these rare, rare books that, you know, that the, the, the medical field that they don't really know much about. So he was looking up rare disorders and he takes this book out and he says to my mum, you know, he looks at my mum and then he looks at me, he says, just look at me, he looks at my mum and he said, has the cafe or lace spot started on her body? And my mum's looking at me, 
I'm not in a hat, man, I'm thinking, what's he talking about? Cafe Lee Sports. I mean, is the cow markings on her body started? Now, I forgot just to say, just before this, I'm saying this, he said, oh, she's going to lose an eye. Just said it's generally that opens this book and says she's going to lose an eye and then jumps into this is this is the calf these cafe lay spots. Now I remember, you know, initially my mum, it was like this, what? What? You know, she was trying to comprehend. And I remember it was almost like my mum always, if she got a shock, she would literally nearly kind of collapse. It was that kind of and for some reason, for me, I think there was a bit of cognitive dissonance, but I focused then on this quite you know, it's funny how the brain works and how we deal with maybe trauma, we deal with certain incidences. Where I didn't jump on the eye thing, I jumped on the cafe on these sports, these cow mountains. And I think he's talking about cow mountains. Cow mountains on my body. And he says to me, Yeah, the cow markings. Where's the cow markings in your body? <laughs> and he says, oh, Well, the cow markings will start. And we're looking at my mum saying, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> this kind of thing. And the next thing he went, Oh, I'm looking at the wrong page. I'm on the wrong disease. Now, this is human nature. How insane human nature is. We make mistakes. And, you know, I see this people read books and we look at, you just have to look at the metaphor, the different schools of thought and metaphysical causes of diseases. There is so many different schools of thought in relation. I had a big book, it was that size, and different, you know, and that was just one school of thought on behind the metaphysical causes of diseases, right? But there's so many, you know, Louise Hayes had had her idea, other training schools had so many other ideas. You know, that is just one example. And it's the same as so many ideologies. It's like you go to nutrition, minerals, um, Eating, there's all sorts of different schools of thought um, in relation to what is good for clients as well, right? And it's easy for us to get stuck or get caught in an ego when we think we're right. And we may right for some people, and we may not be right for others. But it has to start with us having the ability to ask questions and to ask the right questions and one of those questions always needs to be what do you think is going on and it's about giving the power back to the client because often the client knows better than what you may know they may just need some guidance and support, or help, or reassurance. Because I know for me, most of the things that I knew in an instinctive level was I was gaslit, I was told, you know, and, and, and made to believe most of my life for so many things were very serious that there was something wrong with me that I was, you know, that that's not and 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 I was my focus was then always pushed to something else. Right. So the most important thing you can actually do is ask your client and ask their thoughts because that can also give you some nuggets. And often what happens is people in their life when it comes to any health and any challenge the gaslit with the people around about them. And, and it's not always gaslighting that's meant. It's gaslight with people's impatience, people's ignorance, people's trying to protect people. But the reality is a healer or a therapist or a coach or a counsellor, you have to give people the correct space. And if you always want to be right and you want to make assumptions, that can be more about your control, control or your need to prove something or your need to be right, when the reality is, as a healer therapist coach, we don't have to know it all. And again, another powerful thing is you being able to say, I don't know, and I'm not sure how much I can help you. I will try my best. I was always more grateful for people who would be honest with me. Um, rather than take me on and then use me as a social experiment and maybe at times do me no more harm. 
And, you know, often sometimes we can fall into archetypal patterns. And this this was sort of a situation that happened to me recently. You know, we can there's lots of lots of people out there who really want to help clients and you know, we can all sign up for courses where the client or the therapist or whatever wants to really, really help us in whatever that way, shape, form they can. And sometimes they can make mistakes because their own archetypal aspects, they may be a bit of a rescuer, a bit of a hero, and they want to help everyone and want to do what they can, but they're not a perfect fit for everyone. And sometimes when a client comes in for the first time and you get the questions, and if you instinctively know that maybe them coming to you is not the right path, that it would be far better going to someone else, you have to have that space of integrity to say so. And your clients will be very grateful that you have the honesty and transparency to do that. Now, you might they might come to the session and say, look, well, I don't really know where else to go. Can you recommend? And if you don't, they might say, well, I'm open to you help me as much as I can. Or they, they might say, no, thank you, because every time a client goes to someone that is not the right fit for them, it's taken that client longer and longer and longer to get the support and the right people that are right for them. Because sometimes the more that they go along their own path, um, they actually lose confidence and lose faith and get more disempowered and sometimes you know more we can have more problems because they feel you know there's all mixed emotions there can be resentment there can be hurt they can be a giving up and of course at soul level there's aspects we all have to learn ourselves about ourselves but the reality is if you actually are a healing therapist coach you know that we all need support and help but we are not here to help everyone and if you think you're here to help everyone and you want to help everyone. That's the ego. That is not coming from a place of discernment and it's not coming from a place of integrity. So it's really important to listen and never make presumptions because you might be surprised at what you actually find out and you may have projected and think about this. Everything's energy and the more that you make assumptions and project onto someone things that you think or that you believe, you're sending that energetically out to someone who's vulnerable. Think about what that can do to them. So ask the right questions. Ask them, what do they think? Okay, what do they feel it is? What do they sense it is? These are powerful questions that you should always ask your clients. Now, I have a brand new challenge over at um, Eileen Burns Coach over on YouTube. Um, that is now going to be my main channel. I have a Wounded Healer podcast. I also share a lot of tips and things for healers, empaths, intuitives, particularly for those of you who are awakened healers, therapists and coaches. So if you would like more information, check that out. Also make sure you check out some of my courses free resources at stresscoachtraining.co and I'll share a variety of freebies and other resources in the link below. But make sure you check out my new my new YouTube channel and the Windy Tail podcast. We I talk about lots of interesting things and in the first video series we've had Caroline Tobin and we've been talking about really, really interesting things that are really important things that are going on in the collective at the moment. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Bye-bye for now.